Apostle Francis E. Hardison, and I would like to welcome each one of you to my YouTube channel and also to Church on Thursday. It's such a pleasure to have you visiting with us on our YouTube channel on tonight. I need you guys to do me a favor. If you have not done so, would you please like and subscribe to my channel? Therefore, when you subscribe to the channel, you will be notified whenever we go live or either when we upload new content. Also, if this is your first time viewing us, please say something in the chat section and someone from Church on Thursday will welcome you. And I promise that I will also go back and give you a warm welcome. Another thing I need for you to do, if you don't mind, would you please put in the comment section from where you are watching this broadcast from and also let us know how did you come across our channel if this is your first time being with us. Once again, I am Apostle Francis D. Hardison and I welcome you to Church on Thursday and to my YouTube channel. God has blessed me to go into in-depth teaching about guard your gates. Um, previous teachings are up on my channel and if you have not viewed them, I encourage you to go back and to view those so you can be brought up to par with what I have been teaching on. I started out talking about guard your heart, guard your heart. And from there, we went into talking about the gates that we need to guard. I have done a lesson on guarding the eye gate, the ear gate, and the tongue gate. And these lessons have been so relevant for us, for the body of Christ, knowing that God has given us gates that we must guard. The gates serve as our protection to keep things out or if we want to, to let things in. So we all have gates in the spirit realm and sometimes we take our gates for granted. I never thought about the eyes as being a gate. I never thought about the ears as being a gate. I never thought about the tongue being a gate. But as God led me into these studies, it's helping me. I am the first partaker of anything that I would give out to the people of God. It hits home first. So these teachings have caused me to make sure that I guard my gates, that I keep my gates up, that I don't let the wrong thing in, and I'm definitely going to keep the wrong thing out. So I say, God, I thank you. Now we are getting ready to go into a teaching about guard your feet gate. Isn't that ironic that the Lord would take time out to give us scriptures to help us to know that we have feet that are considered a gate and that we need to guard them. We guard our feet gate by watching where we go. Everywhere is not a good place to go. There are some places that the body of Christ may find themselves walking into and that particular place has not been ordained by God. Just as we have guarded the eye gate, the tongue gate, and the ear gate, God wants us to guard our feet, our feet gate. Our feet are our mode of transportation. We know time years ago, before we had modern transportation, people used their feet to carry them places, to take them places. For some people, that was the only mode of transportation that they had. I can remember as a child growing up, a lot of people in my neighborhood, they didn't have cars. And I know that seems so far-fetched, especially if I have some of the younger generation listening to me. There were no cars in our neighborhood, very few cars. And as a matter of fact, I walked 
basically everywhere I went. I walked to school. We walked to the grocery store. We walked to church. We used our feet as a mode of transportation. And I am finding out that God is giving us a command that we are to guard our feet gate. And that's something that we take for granted because we just think about, well, I got my feet on my body and I am going to go this place. I am going to go that place. But let's stop for a moment and ask ourselves a question. Are all the places we going, are those places being sanctioned by the Lord? Have those places been ordained by God? Or are we just following after our flesh, following after our desires, following after the, after the world, and our feet are taking us into places that God will just shake his head. And he, he might even say, that's my daughter, and that's my son. Now look where their feet are taking them. But people of God, we have to hit this one on tonight. We must guard our feet gate. And I want to tell you right now, I can't guard your feet gate for you. You can't guard my feet gate for me. You can't guard anyone else's feet gate but you have to guard your own feet gate. How would you like to know, How would, what would you think about if your feet are carrying you all these places and God will look at you and he will say, that's not where I want you to go. I didn't want your feet to go there. We have to be very careful. We have to be very cautious that we do not follow after the flesh and go into these places where God did not send us. And I can't say it any better than King Solomon. Solomon is known as one of the probably the wisest men who ever lived. Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs and Proverbs are filled with wisdom. And I began to say, we, the body of Christ, and I love to talk about the ecclesia, the ones who have been called out, the ones who call on the name of the Lord, we must use wisdom. We must use wisdom. The Bible said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives it out liberally. God will give us wisdom. People of God, we are living in crucial times. We are living in times when the enemy is trying to get us all off course, where he's trying to get us all sidetracked. He said, well, if I can't get your eyes, if I can't get your ears, if I can't get your tongue, I'll get your feet. Well, tonight, we're stopping that. We are going to stop that. Why, how are we going to stop that? I'm so glad you asked the question. We are going to stop that because we are going to guard our feet. We are going to guard our feet gate. And it comes down to a time we may pray over our feet. And we are known our feet with the holy oil. God, my feet belongs unto you. You know, we told God so many times, my mouth belongs to you. My hands belong to you. But I feel tonight that it's time for the body of Christ to say, Lord, my feet belong unto you. Consecrate your feet for the master's use. When scripture tells us how beautiful are the feet of them, who carry the gospel. God said your feet are beautiful. So therefore, it doesn't matter how they may look to you. They may not matter. It doesn't matter how your feet look to someone else. The Lord has said, how beautiful are your feet, those who carry the gospel. And I want all of you to know right now, once you come into the kingdom of God, you are carrying the gospel. You don't have to, you don't have to be an ordained preacher. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to walk in the fivefold ministries. But once you come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, you got a message. Come on. You have a message that only you can tell. So God is saying unto you, also, oh, how beautiful are your feet? And since our feet are beautiful, why don't we guard our feet? I feel it. 
I am going to guard my feet gate just as much as I sit and guard my eyes and I guard my ears and I guard my tongue. I am going to guard my feet because God wants to use us in a day and time like this to take us where he want us to go, to use us for his glory. So therefore, as I said time and time again, now let's put our feet on the altar and say, Lord, my feet belong unto you. Let me read and see what Solomon had to say. Proverbs, the fourth chapter and the 26th verse, and it's from the NLT. Solomon said, mark out a straight path. Mark out a straight path for your feet. He didn't say mark it out for your eyes, mark it out for your ears, mark it out for your tongue, but mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. God is speaking to us through King Solomon, letting us know, guard your feet gate. Mark out a straight path for your feet. In other words, Solomon is telling us to track where you are walking. Come on. You got to outline it. You got to make this path straight. You cannot let your feet go in places, go indoors, go into things that God did not ordain. He said, mark out a straight path. You got to do it for yourself. That means you have to sit and think about where you're getting ready to go. If God is not in it, we shouldn't go there. Come on. If God is not in it, we shouldn't go there. We shouldn't sit up in the nightclubs. We, sit, we shouldn't be sitting around in bars. We should not be going in these places. Solomon said, mark out a straight path. That's mean I got to calculate it. I've got to think about it. I've got to be sure that where I am going, this is what God wants me to, this is where God wants me to go because I'm guarding my feet gate. Your brothers may go in different places, but you don't have to go. Your sisters may go different places, but you don't have to go. Why? Because there was a calling on your life. God has a calling on your life. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but you must know once you come into the kingdom of God, once you acknowledge God as your Lord and Savior, he has a calling. Come on on your life. So Solomon said, mark out a straight path for your feet. Then Solomon said, stay on the safe path. You got to go in the right direction. He said, stay on the safe path. I began to think about people who have been in situations, they have gone places that they should not go. For instance, they may have gone to a nightclub may have gone to a bar, may have gone somewhere where it was not safe. Come on. And something begins to happen. There could be a fight, a dangerous fight could break out. Someone could start shooting. And because you are not in a safe place, sometimes that person is apt to get shot because we know that when a bullet comes out of a gun, it does not have anyone's name on it. So Solomon is telling us right now, stay on the safe path. If the path that you're getting ready to go on, if it's not safe, tell God, don't let me go there. God, don't let me go anywhere that you don't want me to go. Why? Because I'm learning that I must guard my feet gate. I am going to stay on the safe path. I'm going to mark out a straight path. Come on. You've got to mark it out. You can't let people pull you. You can't let people force you to go places that you know you shouldn't go. You don't have to let your feet walk in these places. Why? Because you're learning. And I believe that God has brought you here to these teachings talking about guarding our gates so you will see the importance of guarding your feet gate. As I forestated, 
I may have understood about the eyes and the tongue and the ears, but I never gave much thought to my feet until I got into this teaching. I don't go in and everywhere. I don't do that. But when I got into this teaching, it made me conscious. Come on. It brought it to a conscious level that we, the body of Christ, we got feet. We have a feet gate. And it's up to us to guard it. So if you never heard this before, I pray tonight that this teaching will resonate on the inside. I pray this teaching will help you to understand. I got, I have feet gate and I must guard my feet. Say so we must go in the right direction. If you're walking in a direction and you know it's not right, back up. If girlfriends going over there, if boyfriends are going over there and you know that it's not the right direction for you, it's nothing wrong with telling them, I'm sorry, I can't go there. Come on. I'm sorry, I can't go. Come on. You know, we have to stop worrying about how people are going to feel because we say we can't. Come on. Honey, if that was a real friend, they would understand. I'm finding out sometimes a lot of people got people hanging around them and they're not a real friend because a real friend should be able to understand when you say, I can't go there. That place is not for me. Uh-huh. I can't be a part of that. I am guarding my feet gate. Come on. I'm guarding my feet gate. I'm guarding my transportation. I'm guarding where I go because I don't want the Lord to come and catch me with my work undone. I don't want God to catch me in the wrong place. Come on. Every place is not the right place. Solomon said, stay on the safe path, which lets us know every path is not safe. There's some dangerous paths out there. Uh, people have gotten in cars and gone off with other people. The person may have started drinking and they get behind the steering wheel and they just drive, 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 driving recklessly and both of them get killed. But what would have happened if that person would have guarded his feet gate and not allowed himself to get in that car? I'm trying to make it plain so you will understand what I'm trying to convey over to you, Solomon said, stay on a safe path. Stay on the safe path. If it's not safe, get off. Come on. Get off. We, we are not like cats. We don't have nine lives. We have one life. And we need to live this life guarding our feet gate. Oh, we got to guard our feet gate. And that means I'm, I am going to remove every obstacle. Anything gets in my way that try to impede my growth, try to hinder my growth in the Lord. I got to get it out of the way. Come on. And that's what God is saying unto us. Remove every obstacle. It may be your friends. It may be your family. You have to remove it. Come on. Because we are growing Every day, we are growing in knowledge, knowing what to do. We are growing in wisdom, knowing how to do it. Come on. We have to grow. We, the body of Christ, have somewhere to go. We have to remove the obstacles. And I have found out in my lifetime that God, he doesn't remove the obstacles for me. I have to remove the obstacles. I have to make a conscious decision that this is not right. My feet do not have to go. My feet do not have to tread there. I am not going. I am going to do like Solomon said. I am going to stay on the safe path. If you stay on the safe path, you may save your life. Come on. Your life is dependent on your feet. I know. I know. Somebody looking funny. But your life is dependent on your feet. Where are your feet taking you? Where have your feet taken you? And where are your feet going to take you? You are in control of your feet. Come on. Oh, we give too much credit to the devil. The devil made me walk there. 
The devil made me go in that door. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. You are the CEO of your life. Come on. You have power. You have authority. You can stop it. Come on. You can stop this stuff. You can stop the vicious cycle. We're learning tonight. We are going to guard our feet. Let me read that particular verse from the New American Standard Bible, the NASB. Solomon said, watch the path of your feet. Watch your feet. Watch your feet where they go. Watch your feet. Watch your feet where they go. We are, women will go to the um, nail salon and they'll spend X amount of dollars getting a manicure. And now we're into getting a pedicure. We'll get those feet all clean. Get all the dead skin scraped off our feet. Why? Because we want our feet to look pretty. We'll get that nail polish on our toes because we are dressing up our feet. Well, let me ask you a question. After you've done all of that, where are your feet going to take you? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Where are your feet going to take you? Solomon said, according to the NASB, watch the path of your feet. Come on. Where are you walking to? Where are you going? Did God ordain for you to go there? Did God tell you to go there? Or are you going on your own? We'll spend all that money getting our feet all done. There are some women who spend X amount of dollars and their feet will carry them into nightclubs. Come on, I know y'all don't like this, so you all can just drop them green apples. It'll carry you into bars. Come on, if you're not careful, your feet will carry you in the hotel rooms. Oh my God, don't get me on here. Your feet will carry you into hotel rooms. Uh -huh. Sometimes husbands and wives, they are married. And then their feet will take them to hotel rooms to meet somebody else. I know I'm talking right. Where are your feet taking you? Spend all that money getting your feet dressed up. Come on. And you didn't take time to guard your feet gate. When that devil, when that devil brings that thought to you, oh, you ought to shut it down. Oh, I'm helping somebody. Oh, I am helping somebody. Shut it down. It's time for you to guard your feet gate. Solomon say, watch the path of your feet. Come on. I'm watching where I walk. Come on. I'm watching, and I want to encourage every last one of you under the sound of my voice that you need to watch where you're going. Come on. Watch the path of your feet. And he said, and all your ways will be established. When you walk, when you watch the path of your feet, all your ways will be established. That means when I watch where I go, that God will establish my going. Come on. I am being very meticulous. I am being very careful. I am watching the path of my feet. Lord, guide my feet. Come on. So many times we have prayed, Lord, guide my mouth. Guide my tongue. Guide my eyes. Guide my ears. But tonight, we are hammering in on our feet. Lord, guide my feet. Come on. I want God to guide my feet. Why? Because I want my ways to be established. And once God guides your feet and you watch the path of your feet, the will of God, it will be established in your life. Come on. Those feet that we didn't think much of, those feet that we did not realize had a gate, but it's got a gate and it'll lead you to a road that you can't get off of. I don't know about you all, but I have to watch my feet. I am guarding my feet gate. Listen, Proverbs 4 and 26 from the NIV says, give careful thoughts to the path for your feet. Oh, that means I told you earlier, you got to think about it. You have to put some thought in it. You got to stop jumping up and going with the crowd. Come on. You got to stop jumping up and say, I'll go with you. Oh, I, I'm going. I'm going to that club. I'm going to that bar. I'm going to that hotel. I'm going. You have to give careful thought to the path 
for your feet. Because your brother and sister, they don't care about you that way. And I'm talking about in the spirit realm right now. Come on. Oh, the Bible said, how can two walk together except they be agreement? So what is God saying? If you are saved and this other person is unsaved and you two are walking together, you agreeing on something. I know y'all don't like this, but this is boot camp. This is boot camp where we come to get strengthened, where we come to get power, where we come to be educated so we can grow in God. How can two, that's the feet, walk together except they be in agreement? Come on. If I'm saved and I'm walking all the time with this unsaved person, something wrong somewhere. We come into agreement with that. Not saying that you can't have friends who may not be saved. I'm not saying that. But then you just constantly, constantly walking with these people and you're not pulling them. Nine times out of ten, they are pulling you. How can two walk? Come on. How can two walk together? Except they be in agreement. I didn't write the Bible, but I give it out unto all of us. He said, give careful thought to the path for your feet. That means I got to think about this thing. Come on. Is it profitable for me to go here? Come on. Will I gain something for me to go there? Or will I lose something? Will I come out the winner? Or will I come out the loser? He said, give careful thought to the path for your feet. I want you to begin to think about it. I want you to give careful thoughts for the paths of your feet. Where are your feet taking you? Where are your feet leading you? Where are you allowing your feet to carry you? Are you going into dangerous territory? Are you going into dangerous waters? Are you going into places that God did not ordain? Oh, my, my, my. We can't go there. Oh, bye. Shut up. We can't go there. We got to we got to get before God. Lord, guide my feet. Come on. Guide my feet, Lord. If you don't want me to go there, don't let me go. Come on. Sometimes you might get a little weak, but that's when you fall down and you begin to cry out to the one who strengthens you. That's when I love to pull up Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can. Oh, my feet, you're going to be strong. Come on. Feet, we are not going over there. Feet, we are not going there. Sometimes you got to have a conversation. My God. Woo. You have to have a conversation with your feet. Talk to your feet. Take charge over your feet. Let those feet know. Honey, we're, we're going to serve the Lord. Come on. Joshua said, as for me, and my house, we will. He didn't say we might. Oh, I think about it. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, I bring it on down to the gates. As for me and my eyes, oh, and my ears, and my tongue, and my feet, we will. Come on, come on, make that declaration. We will serve the Lord. I am going to give careful thought to the paths for my feet. And he said, and be steadfast in all your ways. Come on. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be tossed and turned. Come on. You have to be steadfast. The Bible said we are to be steadfast and unmovable. My feet are planted. Woo! On a solid ground. Come on. And my feet are on the rock. And the rock is Jesus. Come on. I'm, I am going to be steadfast in all my ways. And God is telling us through Solomon that you need to be steadfast in your ways. Come on. Be steadfast. That's why we have to die out of our ways. Come on. We have to put our ways on the back burner. We have to put our ways on the altar and say, God, let your ways be in my life. Come on. Not my ways because I want my ways to be steadfast. And I'm here to tell you, and I believe within my spirit, as you begin to give careful thought to the paths of your feet, you will become steadfast. Come on. In all of your ways. 
When you give thought, come on, you will say, I know I can't go over there. Come on. My feet can't go. That old mind will tell you, go, go, go. And your feet will say, no, no, no. I don't hear nobody talking. Honey, your feet will say, no, no, no. I'm not going. Come on. I'm not going. Come on. You can try to make me go all you want to, but I believe these feet going to start locking up. Come on. And those feet know that you're saved, that you are saved. They know that God has brought you out. Come on. And God didn't bring us out to go back in. I like that. I get excited. I don't believe God brought us out for us to go back in. Come on. Be, give careful thought to the path for your feet. And be steadfast in all your ways. Let's listen. To Proverbs, one of my favorite scriptures, Proverbs. Oh, my, 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 these might be Psalms. Psalms 37 and 23. Psalms 37 and 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Psalm 37 and 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And that's talking about a woman also, because when the Bible refers to man, God is not sitting and looking at gender, but man encompass all of us, male and female, he made in his image. Oh my, shut The steps of a good man, come on, are ordered by the Lord. When you are in God, God will order your step according to his will, according to his way, according to his word. He will order your steps. Order means those steps have been established. Your steps have already been prearranged. Your steps have already been predestined. And we cannot afford to get off the track. Woo! You can't afford to get off of the track you got to stay on the track that God has ordained for you. You are guarding your feet gate. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he, talking about God, delights in his way. When we follow the path that God has ordered for our steps, come on. God takes delight. When God sees you walking, down the path. We can say down the road. I want you all to understand. If you want to say walking down the road that he has already established for you, God, he takes delight in that. He began to say, that's my daughter. That's my son. They are walking in the way that I've already ordered their steps. Before you were born, before you came into this world, God already had ordered your steps. Oh, my God. Before you put on your earth suit, before your mother and father got together, before you were conceived in your mother's womb, God had already ordered your steps. I wish I had a believer. Oh, my. God had already ordered your steps. God put an order in. Come on. You know how it is when we go to the restaurants and we put an order in? You might go to McDonald's or Burger King and you put an order in for your favorite sandwich or your fries and your drink. Come on. You get what you order. If you don't get what you order, you know, you know how we do. I'm not going to go there tonight, but you know how we do. Come on. So how do you think God feels when he see you not walking in the way that he's already ordered your steps? Now, you know you get upset when you go to these places and you don't get what you ordered. If you go to a restaurant and you place an order for a steak well done, come on. And when the waiter or the waitress bring it out, you're looking for a well done steak. If you look at that steak and you don't like a rare steak, a medium rare steak, you don't want it. You'll say, come in. That's not what I ordered. Well, I believe God helped this old girl. I believe God is looking at us, looking at the steps that we are taking, and God is saying, I didn't order that. <laughs> Woo, I didn't order that. Come on. I didn't order that. Uh, I did not order that. 
And if we get upset, think about how God might feel. Come on. Think about how God might feel when he sees us going in places that he did not order. When God sees us going through doors that he did not order. When God sees us doing all this stuff that he did not order. He's not happy. I wish I had somebody. Woo! I tell you, I feel the Ruach Kokodash. I feel the Ruach Kokodash. The steps of a good man, a good woman, are ordered by the Lord. God put something there. In other words, God calculated every step you would take before you took the first step. Ah, <laughs> woo! Listen, listen. God calculated every step that you would take before you took the first step. And he ordered them. Come on up in here. Your steps have been custom ordered for your feet. Come on. The road that I walk on, this was custom ordered for my feet. Come on. The road that you are traveling on right now has been custom ordered just for your feet. Come on. God put the order in. Huh? From the foundation of the world. From eternity. Come on. Before we had systems. Before we had government. Before we had rulers. God already did it. Mm, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. My God. But God put the order in. Yes, he did. He put the order in for your steps. My God. Where are your feet taking you? Are your feet following the ordered steps that God Put in for you. Come on. Only you can answer the question. Somebody said, well, I slip up. Uh-huh, that's all right. But the Bible said a just man falls down seven times, but he always, come on, he always gets back up. You don't have to stay down. Get your feet up. Pull your feet up out of the muck and miry clay. Pull your feet out of that stuff and say, feet, I'm guarding you now. Come on. Because my steps have been ordered by the Lord. And God called me a good man. Come on. I don't care what the world call you. The world will call you anything. The world will call you out of your name. The world will call you bad. The world will call you ugly. The world will say all, all manner of evil against you. But the Bible said Psalms 37 and 23. God called you good. Come on. Ah, oh, oh, so much coming at me right now. God called you good. Come on. Everything God made, when God made it, he looked at it, people, and God said it was good. Come on. So he said the steps of a good man uh, are ordered by the Lord. Lord, I thank you for ordering the steps of our feet in the foundation of the world. And when God see you walking in the steps that he has ordered for you, he gets happy. Oh, he takes delight. He said, that's my girl. Ah, uh, that's my boy. That's my woman. That's my man. Ah, uh, they're following in the steps. Their feet are walking now. Come on. And the path that I ordered for them. Their feet are treading in the direction that I ordered for them. This is what God is saying unto us right now. The, the steps of a good man, the steps of a good woman, they are ordered by the Lord. How many of y'all want God to take delight in your steps? Come on. How many of you want God to take delight in your ways? Oh, when we let our feet step the way God designed them to step, when we let our feet go in the places where God want them to go, God said, I take delight in that. Ah, uh, he gets happy looking at us. And I thank God that the steps of a good man, according to our feet, have been ordered by the Lord. I know Satan will try to knock you off course. Satan will tell you, some of you people, oh, that's not true. But you got to rise up. Come on, church, on Thursday. You have to rise up in your power, in your authority, in your anointing, and tell the devil to be quiet. Tell that open the, that demon to shut up. Come on. Because my steps. Come on. Oh, when I when I grabbed hold of that word. And I began to realize I had to guard my feet gate. And I began to realize that my steps 
have been on about the Lord. And that means when my feet start moving in a direction that God has called me to walk, that man won't understand. But that's all right. Come on. That's all right. Man will misunderstand. Man will have all kind of things to say. But honey, when you are guarding your feet gate and you know that your steps have been ordered, that they have been set up, that they have been preordained for God, you just keep walking. Come on. Woo! You keep walking because every step you take with your feet are getting you closer to your destiny. They are getting you closer to the things that God preordained for your life. And you're not going to get there. Mm, if you don't guard your feet gate, come on. You got to guard it. You've got to guard it. You have got to guard your feet gate. Lord, I bless God. I bless God. This is a good, intense teaching on tonight. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Come on. Going back to that verse we started with. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Your feet. Stay on. The safe path. We got some more we've got to tell you. Oh, we're coming back into this word because this word is good, good, good. Because I tell you, some of you probably didn't realize that you had a feet, that your feet had a gate, and that God wants you to guard your feet gate. It's vitally, vitally important, my sisters, my brothers, that we, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, that we guard our feet gate. If God didn't ordain it, we can't go there. Come on. If God didn't sanction it, we can't go there. If God's not leading us, we can't go there. We must be determined that our feet will only go where God has called them to go. Your feet has a calling. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Your feet has a calling. Your feet are part of your salvation. Your whole body encompasses your salvation. We are guarding our feet gates. We will pick this back up again because I thought I was going to get it all in in one teaching. But I thank God for the rhema. How the rhema comes down. And how God just blesses us. I bookmarked it and I stopped it right there. I tell you, I'm blessed, 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 blessed. I'm guarding and I am learning to guard my gates. I have to. No one is going to do this for you. Just like no one is going to do this for me. I must guard my feet gates. Oh, I pray tonight that you were blessed. I pray that something was said tonight that resonated on the inside of you. I pray that you have been blessed as you watch this broadcast and as you listen to the word of the Lord. I get excited. I am passionate about this because I know without a shadow of doubt that my steps have been ordered by the Lord. That's why I'm able to sit and to teach and to expound and to preach the word of God. I'm just following the path that God outlined for me to go. And I pray that you will jump on board if you have not and follow the steps that God has given unto you. Once again, I am Apostle Francis D. Hargis and I thank every last one of you for joining us tonight for Church on Thursday. Don't forget, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please, ma'am and sir, do that and once you subscribe, hit that subscription bell. And that way you will be notified whenever we go live or upload any content. Also, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. When you hit the thumbs up button, that causes this broadcast to go out even further. It will cause YouTube to recommend us to other people. In other words... We'll just start popping up on people's news feed in YouTube. And I believe that's what's happening. That some people have stumbled upon it because we popped up in their news feeds. I need you guys to do that favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Help us to continue to do what we're doing. 
and I call you here on Church on Thursday night, Ambassadors. I invite you all to meet us again on Thursday night for Church on Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Also, come on over. I'll be back on YouTube Saturday night, too, at 7 o'clock p.m. for the Hour of Power broadcast. We'll be broadcasting on YouTube and on Facebook. And if you hit that notification bell, you will get the notification when we come on live this Saturday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's been my pleasure sharing with you on tonight. All right, we're getting ready to go. And once again, I am Apostle Francis D. Hardison, and I say unto you, you go with God, and God will go with you. I love all of you. Bye-bye. I invite you to stay connected to us by visiting my website www.francisdhardison.org.